Hello everyone. Welcome to my second video on how to start with Google Earth Engine code editor. So when you open your code editor in Google Earth Engine, you signed in for the first time, you will see your user interface something like this. And you can see that on your left panel, there are no resources, there are no scripts or anything available because it's your first time. Um, so the first step to do is to create a new repository. So there are three options, repository, folder, and file. So the repository is where you will store scripts according to the access level or according to different projects. You can also create folders to divide uh, your scripts uh, in a sensible way. And a new file is where you will open a new empty file and start scripting so that is the script itself so let's create a new repository now so when you create um, a repository for the first time uh, you will get a user interface a pop-up like this so you can see that usually <clears throat> in my case the username is water in ag uh, in your case it will be your username it is better to keep your username as uh, the home folder so the, it's asking you to create a home folder because it's for the you are using it for the first time so this step will not happen again once you have a home folder let's continue and now in the home folder it's asking okay create a new repository and you can see that uh, google earth engine also use git repository so those who know more about git um, you can relate it to how Git repositories are arranged and plot. But you don't need to know uh, more about Git. You can manage everything here itself. So here, uh, let's create a new repository called uh, uh, module 11 or any other name. It's just a name uh, to organize your scripts uh, in a sensible way. So create, and you can see that already we have a a repository ready here and you are the owner under the owner category because it belongs to you this repository is empty so now let's uh, create a new script in that particular repository so what i will do is i will go to new file and you can see that it's already by default selected this particular repository. If you have more than one repository, there will be a drop down here where you can select the repository. And uh, let me give a name called um, script one. Again, just a name. It's up to you what name you want to give. You can give any name. But it, please keep in mind that don't give any space uh, in any of these names. Uh, that will save you from any. Uh, future errors it may cause you can give a description if you want or you can also leave it uh, empty i'm going to leave it empty i said okay now you can see that it created a file inside this particular repository and this is and you click on that script one and now you can see script one here so this is your blank empty script file now another uh, important uh, step is to bring in any asset. Okay, so let us bring uh, one shape file to this asset. As you can see, if you click on new, you can upload your own GeoTIFF if you have anything, or shape files or CSV files uh, or image collection or folder. Usually you will be working with shape files, GeoTIFF and CSV uh, in your own data. For example, what you work with QGIS. So let's uh, see how to import a shape file. So I'll click on uh, new shape files. It will show you a user interface like this. Now read the explanation. See, please drag and drop or select files for this asset. For shape file, it is expecting SHP, DBF, PRJ, SHX, like this or you can also zip all those files in one particular uh, zip file and drag in here. That is also possible. 
So let us uh, look at the shapefile. Now, this is the shapefile for Urmia Basin, which I have already shared with you. So you can either drag and drop all these files like this. So it says QPJ does not have a character. So it does not create a, uh, does not recognize QPJ because QPJ is a QGIS specific uh, uh, extension file. So you don't need that. Whenever you get that error, read that well and most of the time you can solve it yourself. So this means QPJ is not recognized. So I will exclude QPJ and put it here. Because shapefile, these four files are enough. As long as you have a DBF file, PRG file and SHP file, it should work. Now it read uh, the asset name automatically, but I don't need this name. I just need it basin. You can give any other name. And you can see that it is getting saved in users water in ag um, in your default folder home directory which is fine now i will just upload it and when you click on upload you can see that in the tasks this uh, here it will appear the task of uploading will appear and it will show how many seconds have passed the seconds will not move as such. You may have to refresh it now and again to see whether the task will has finished or not. Um, usually, for simple geometries, it will should not take more time. Depends on uh, how busy the server is. So in the meantime, let's uh, see some details about uh, the UI. Uh, you can see that this UI, you can drag and uh, redesign uh, the UI if you want to see map view more, or if you want to see right panel more, or code multi more. So you can uh, redesign a bit depending on what you want. Um, now let's see how to import a data. Once you have a script, uh, how do you import data which is stored in Google Earth Engine? So I want to import uh, SRTM data. So I just type SRTM and you can see that, okay, SRTM digital elevation data version four is available. So I will just select on that and it will show you some details. Uh, description the bands available here you can see that elevation 90 meters in, um, in meters units and this is the snippet we can use to import this data but I, I see that this is 90 meters so I, I don't want 90 meters so I will close it and search for SRTM again and I can see that the second one is SRTM 30 meters so let me uh, use SRTM 30 meter and this is a snippet, there's only one band, and you can also read other description, etc. You can use the import button here to import the data as such. And here in the variable, you can change the name uh, to DEM or anything else, which makes sense to you. It's uh, the naming is up to you. Uh, as I said, you know, avoid spaces. That is the most important part. So now, I have added DEM. Now, if you want to, um, now I have imported the DEM. Now, if you want to see uh, the this particular layer in this map, the command is map dot add layer DEM. Put an empty curly bracket because that is where you usually uh, set your palette. Now we don't want any palette; we just want to see it. And this is where uh, this this string, uh, anything inside the court is string. It is not a command or anything or an object. So this is to uh, this string will appear in the layers manager here. Okay, so you can write DEM SRTM. So inside the string space is okay because that is just a string. It will just read the string, and every line in uh, in uh, javascript because this code editor used javascript language uh, should be finished with a semicolon that's it you can save the script 
So if it is saved, that star will not be there. And just run it. And now you can see that uh, the DEM is there. In the layers, the DEM, SRTM, as you can see, this DEM, SRTM is what you have given here. So this is the text file which you want to appear in the layers manager. Switch off, switch on, and you can also uh, set some uh, custom palette, etc. etc. You can also set palette here if you want. Um, and uh, add some colors. I'm just adding some random colors. Yeah, and you can apply that, and you can see that your DM will look more beautiful. And you can also import that palette. So, so this palette is now imported. So you can use that. Uh, you can change the name, uh, like DEM. Sorry, yeah, DEM underscore palette. And you can use that one here as your palette also. So you can save it, run it. So now it will appear. You don't have to set here again. So this palette can be used again and again for you. But now you can see that when you add the layer, the layer is added for the entire globe. The 30 meter SRTM is added for the entire globe. But the area of our area of interest is Urmia Lake boundary. Now let us see how to how to set your study area. So there are two options. One option is you can set your study area using a latitude and longitude. And you can also set your study area using a vector file which you have just uploaded. So let's see how to uh, centralize your map view uh, to a latitude and longitude. So let's go to uh, QGIS. You want to know the uh, central latitude longitude of your study area. So I will go to QGIS. And this is uh, the Miando aggregation scheme. Or, uh, or I can also open. Urmia Basin Boundary. So Urmia Basin Boundary is here. At, and this is where scheme boundaries. So if you remember, I have asked all of you to install a plugin called uh, Coordinate Capture. And here, this will be very useful for us. So it will capture coordinate on mouse click. So, so it's already installed in my case. So this is the um, icon for coordinate capture. I will use that icon, and it's here. So you can, so you can say start capture here and go somewhere. I will go somewhere in the middle of uh, Urmia Lake Basin. Click there, and it it will show me the X and Y in UTM because the layer is in UTM. 3268, 38 north, and it will also show me the corresponding x and y in latitude launcher. So I will select that one, control C, copy that one, and then go back to my script and I will say map.set send longitude, latitude, and the zoom level at which I want to see. Uh, the steady area that's it so I can save it again and run it and see uh, I'm already in Urmia so it's already the map is already centralized in Urmia you can change the map to satellite here and see the DM you can also yeah set the transparency here and things like that and you can see that here the ingestion and the uploading of the um, vector file, the Urmia Lake Basin is over. Uh, so whenever you see a tick mark, that means it's done. It took 43 seconds to upload the shape file. And in the assets, you can see that uh, a new boundary called Basin is already uploaded. I named it Basin. Now, this is one way of uh, setting your study area. Now, to comment that line, if I put two slashes in the beginning of the line, that means that line is no longer uh, enabled in the script. So that will not be run. That is now a comment because I want to show you how to set uh, uh, how to set uh, this the map view using this Urmia Lake Basin boundary. Before that, 
we have to import this basin boundary to the script so to import the basin boundary you can click on this basin and it will show you all the description of the shapefile which you have just imported and you can use the import button here to import uh, that layer here in the script and you can see by default it name it table so i'm going to change the name to basin so that's already there now after that uh, you can see we will see how to uh, set your steady area based on uh, based on this object so this layer is now imported as an object so what we can do is uh, we can say there's a command called map.sender object I can select the object basin and say seven the same zoom level so this basin is coming from here so that means the map will be centered um, on this basin boundary again semicolon save run so you can see that it is again centered here now if you um, if you want to know the details about one pixel here you can always zoom in and you can use inspector then in, if you put inspector you can see that the cursor has become a, a plus mark here and then you can now click anywhere and it will show you all the details the elevation one two six seven the point the x and y um, where the zoom level the scale uh, the value of the elevation yeah and some uh, information about the objects available uh, in the map view so this is how you will see the details now um, now you just want to know you just want to clip this uh, dem uh, to urmia so what i will do is i will create a new variable dem underscore urmia and i will say dm dot clip basin yeah click to the basin so please uh, clip this dm to basin so that's what this script means i will save it and remember i have already added this big dm for the entire globe here so i have to comment it here i will just uh, copy this one paste it here and change the layer into dm underscore urmia so that i i can view only the uh, clipped dm i will save it again and i will run it see now the dm is uh, clipped to uh, urmia and we have added that layer now if you want to know so here you can see that i have used two uh, or three main commands one is map.setSender, map.sender object map.add layer so these are all functions of google earth engine and if you want to know how these functions work always uh, copy uh, go to docs you can paste it here and you can uh, you can see that all the documentation is here so if you click on that you can see what are the arguments it requires etc etc so please keep on referring to your documentation and this documentation is uh, in addition to uh, the developers documentation which i have already shared with you in the canvas thank you i hope uh, it was uh, really useful for you uh, to get started with uh, google Earth engine thank you